Today I want to take another look at Photoshop's Depth Blur Neural Filter. It has had some improvements and we're going to take a look at those improvements today. Hello everyone and welcome to the Joy of Editing with Dave Cully. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope everyone is doing great out there. I want to take another look at Photoshop's Depth Blur Neural Filter. I like this filter, but it had a few drawbacks to it and I think it's getting better and I want to show you some of the new improvements today and I think you're going to be quite pleased with them. I'll be trying this filter out in three different images. This image, this image, and this image. One of the images I will let you know straight up will not work and I'll show you what to look for and you'll know exactly what images will work with this neural filter or won't. Well let's move on to the first example. So we have this image here and let's go ahead and run the neural filter on it. So just come up to the filter menu, click on neural filters and we want to make sure we click on depth blur. Now this is still in beta but it has been vastly improved I got to tell you that. Uh, they added this new focus subject, which is really good, and I believe it comes on by default. So it so Photoshop looks for a subject, and that's really nice, because generally you want your subject in focus. So we have our focus subject on, and you can see right away, let's see, here is the before and here's the after. It's perfect, really. Now, you have a focal range here. You can adjust the depth of field. Right now, it's a very shallow depth of field. But if you want more of the area in focus, like behind her, like this chair, you can take this focal range and start to drag it to the right and give it a second update. See that chair is in focus. That looks a little more realistic to me, and I kind of like that. But you can work with the focal range. You can adjust the blur strength. It's a very simple, straightforward filter to use. It'll make it more blurry, or you just want it to look realistic, and I think that looks good there. You can add haze if you want to. Of course, you were not going to have haze in a building, right? Unless you're in a shower there, but we're going to shut the haze off. But you do have haze in case you need it. You have a temperature control, a tint control. I generally don't use these. I'll do these adjustments in Photoshop as well as saturation and brightness. But here's another feature which I am super happy with, and that's the green feature. The previous version didn't have this, and whenever you blurred the background, you lost any kind of green that was in there, which made it look unrealistic. But now you can add green just by dragging the slider to the right to match the grain of the photo. Now, how much grain should you add? Good question. Zoom into your photo, look at the original in focus area, and try to match the amount of grain with the amount of grain that's on the in focus area. It's just that simple, and when you do, you're going to have a more realistic uh, bokeh effect. Hold the presses. Wait a minute. I just noticed I'm missing a part of her laptop computer that she's carrying right on the edge. But we have a masking tool we can use. See over here, we have the plus and the minus. This area of the laptop is out of focus and we need to fix that. Make sure you click on the minus masking brush and then just paint back in the missing part of the computer. It's just that easy. Now, don't forget, you have these masking tools, so you can fix little issues, and that's kind of nice. And now we have to output this back into Photoshop. I like to use output as a new layer, and you have different options here with this drop-down menu, but I'm going to output it to a new layer and click OK. All right, now let's go ahead and take a look. Here's the before, and here's the after. Pretty realistic, other than that little issue I had with the uh, laptop computer, but that was a quick fix right inside of the neural filter. Now let's move on to our next image. And here's our next image. Let's see what kind of result we get with it. Let's go back to filter and neural filter, and let's click on our depth blur filter. And you notice it says processing on device. That's something new. It processes on the device now. I thought it automatically focused on the subject, but I guess it doesn't. So let me go ahead and click focus subject. It looked like it was focused on the subject, but it's focused on the subject. But as you can see, it's done a really nice job here. Now let's give it some more uh, blur strength to really blur out that background. As you can see, it's doing a really great job and everything looks good. And I highly recommend that you really zoom into your images to make sure it's not missing anything. Uh, and you can see it before and after right here. If you click this right here, show original, it's missed a little piece of the subject's hair. And we can use that uh, masking tool to fix that if we want to. Let's turn this back on. And let me get the uh, negative brush. Now that brush is way too big. And I'm just going to go ahead and paint that hair back in. I'll overpaint maybe a little bit. 
Okay, now you can see I overpainted, so let's go ahead and get the plus brush. And it's way too big. I'll make it smaller. I'm just using, using my left bracket key. And I can just come here and fix that, just like so. So it's a good idea to really go in and check. And while I'm in here, we can look at the grain pattern. There's a tiny wee bit of grain. You may not see it, but I'm just going to add a little bit of extra grain to the background. But this grain feature is really nice. I'm going to go ahead and fit this back to the screen. So that's done a good job. And by the way, if you don't want to use focus subject, and I don't know why you wouldn't, let's uncheck it. You can also see where it says click to edit focal point. You can click right here and add the focal point there as well. You can do that or do focus subject, but I like focus subject and I think it does a good job. But if you want to change your focal range, give it more depth of field, you can go ahead and start to drag this to the right. And as you can see, it'll change the depth of field, which may look a little more natural in this case here. So let me just uh, pull this back just a wee little bit. Now I'm noticing an issue and do you see it? Do you see this right here? How it didn't blur part of the palm tree and over here, this part of the palm tree? That didn't show up until I pulled this focal range and started to drag it to the right. And you can see them getting, you know, they're not out of focus here and here, right? So it's missed that. And I want to show you something. Here's, remember I told you there's a way to tell if you have an issue on your image, whether uh, this filter will work or not. And that is using this uh, depth map only feature. If you click on this, you can see the actual depth map. But you can see, see how this, this palm tree is this gray color, but you can see it's a little darker on here and you can see it's a little darker on there. So that means it didn't quite make the proper depth map. Everything else is perfect on here, except there and there. Now you can still use the filter in this image and I'll show you how we can fix it when you take it back into Photoshop, a very simple and easy fix. This is a really nice feature, this output depth map. It lets you send depth maps to Photoshop and you can use those with other filters. And I use them from time to time and I'm not gonna get into that right now, but I like to check to see if an image will work with this feature. I just toggle it on and like when I see that's dark and that's dark, I know that's gonna be a problem, okay? So let me uncheck this for now. But we're gonna go ahead and uh, send this back to Photoshop and I'll show you how I can fix that little issue and that little issue, no problem. And again, I have output set to new layer. I'm gonna click okay. And now we'll be back in Photoshop. And now we can see here is the before and here is the after, but it does a really great job. Now. I'm gonna go ahead and fix these palm trees. I'm gonna go right on this layer here, not a problem. Get my spot healing tool, that's the uh, type to J key on your keyboard, and I'm just gonna paint that right there. And it's gone, you see that. Spot healing tools are amazing. And that's a quick and simple fix. And by the way, if you're wondering why I didn't work on these palm trees in the neural filter with the masking brush, it wouldn't work. It'll take something that was in focus and then went out of focus. It'll bring something back into focus, but it can't take something that was the opposite. In other words, an area that was in focus and then make it out of focus. It can't do that. It's kind of hard to explain, but think of it this way. It's a masking tool. It's not a blurring tool. The filter itself does the blurring that can just remove blur. It can't add blur, it's a masking tool. I hope that makes sense. And now let's come to our last image. And this one, remember I told you there was one image that wouldn't work. Well, do you think it's this one? You're gonna find out here in a sec. So let's go ahead and click on filter and let's go to neural filter. And one more time, let's click on depth blur and see what kind of result we get. Okay, and looky here, this time focus subject was checked on. Okay, so sometimes it's on, sometimes it's off. I, I don't understand that. Uh, but let me go ahead and pull up the blur strength. Now it's focused on the subject. Let's take a look at the depth map here. And because uh, remember, I always like to look at the depth map to see if the image is gonna work or not. So let's click it. Right now, it seems like the image is working, but I'll show you it's not. Because you notice something unique here or odd, I should say. You see this person back here? They're dark, as dark as these people up in the front, right? So it's thinking that this subject is in the same depth plane as these subjects up here. And that's what a depth map does. It takes a look at the depth of the, uh, of the image here, and it's got this wrong. Photoshop has got this one wrong, or the neural filter, I should say, has got this one wrong. So this will not work. So let's shut that off, and I'll show you what I mean. 
Let's go back and see the blurred image. Now, let me really blur it, but watch this girl back here as I really take up the blur strength. Now, remember, it's on focus subject. Our subjects are in the front. So let's go ahead and move this to the right and really increase the blur, but watch that girl. She never goes out of focus. That's a problem, right? So that would look very unrealistic. We couldn't use that. So let me do something here just for the heck of it. Let me turn on output depth map only. Let's check this on and let's click OK. I'm going to send this back into Photoshop as a depth map only. And I know you're saying, Dave, what in the heck are you going to do with this? Well, I'm going to show you. I'm, this is an added bonus. I'm going to show you a workaround when the depth blur filter doesn't work. Another filter that you can use. And you can use the depth map that was generated from the depth blur filter. So this is a good tip. So pay close attention here. The first thing I'm going to do is get my brush tool. And remember, I said she is the same color as these folks up here, meaning she's in the same depth plane and that's not correct. She should be in this gray area back here. So I'm going to get my brush tool. I'm going to option click or I'll click this right here. And just for the sake of being fast here, and it will work just fine with my brush tool, I'm going to make sure I'm on this depth map layer here. And I'm with a nice soft edge brush at 100%, I'm going to paint that gray color right around her. I can over, over, Go over her a little bit, just like so. And you'll see it'll work out just fine. You could be real accurate here and use the selection tool and so on, but this is going to work fine, and you'll, you'll get the drift here. So I'm just making her that same color as this area back in here, okay? So she's in that plane right there. Now I have to save this out as a channel. Now I have an action for you. I'm going to link it in the description below this video. You can click on that and download my action. It'll save you a lot of time because I want to save this depth map to a channel. Once you download that action and double click on it and open up your actions, you're going to find it lives inside of your actions. So then you'd open your actions and you should find it near the bottom of the list. And it should be in a folder called the joy of editing just make sure you have depth map highlighted and click the play and it will make that depth map channel for you because we're going to need that here shortly but for now we can go ahead and close out our actions and the other thing it does is it duplicates our background layer and gives us a new layer which we're going to send into another filter and that filter is going to be found in this blur group here and it will be the lens blur so go ahead and click on lens blur and when you do, you'll probably notice that you have under depth map, a source that says depth map. If you don't, just click this drop down menu and make sure you have depth map clicked on. And that's that depth map. So you'll notice now, see right here where it says set focal point. I'm going to go ahead and click this and we can uh, set a focal point. You see this little pointer here. I'm going to point it on this guy's face right here give it a second or two and his face is in focus these guys are in focus and you'll notice now this girl back here is out of focus now if you want more blur you could take this blur radius and drag it the whole way over to the right and really blur out that background if you want less blur you can drag it more to the left and then you'll get less of a blur back there so whatever you want so let's get a realistic amount of blur maybe something like this that we can really see and now she has the correct amount of blur and also there is a noise slider here where you can add grain to the out of focus areas to match the in focus areas which is very important all it's left for us is to click ok and we're back here in photoshop now there's some other issues here and i could put a uh, layer mask on this layer right here and if i want to i can get some black paint and a paintbrush and if this cherry sitting on is a little out of focus right here we can just paint over here and fix that right up now just to sum things up for you here whenever you need to get that extra bokeh in an image that extra blurry background or foreground use that depth blur neural filter try it out and remember you can take a look at the depth map right inside of that filter and see if that filter will work or not if you find out it's not going to work for you go ahead and save the image with the depth map only. And then once you get it back in Photoshop, as I corrected the girl in this image, you just want to, you know, paint on the depth map, whatever color gray that'll fix an area up. You'll fix it. And then you're going to go ahead and use my action and save that as a channel. And then just fire up that lens blur filter and you'll be good to go. So one way or the other, you're going to get your job done. And both of those filters now have that green to make 
your job look very realistic, and that's super important. Oh, look, I noticed I missed the little spot right here. Oh, my gosh. Let me get my healing tool, spot healing tool. I'm going to type J, and I'm just going to give it a little tap here and just fix that little section right up, just like so. Hey, I think that'll do the trick. It just has to look realistic. I know somebody out there was going to say, hey, man, you missed that. Well, I did miss it, and now I fixed it. So thanks for forgiving me. I really appreciate that. Well, there it is, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial today. So give that new depth blur filter a try. And now if you encounter any issues when using that depth blur neural filter, now you know how to handle those problems. Just save out a depth map and use my Photoshop action that you can download for free below this video. And if you can't remember all my steps, just go ahead and watch this video again and refresh yourself. Today I had a few issues, but I showed you how I worked through the issues. And we're Photoshop people, we need to learn how to take care of things. And I'm here to show you different things that I know and help you out the best I can. If you enjoyed the tutorial today, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe, click that bell notification icon. Then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it. Well, I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today on the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. And I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.